think it's amazing. Anytime somebody is willing to put, you know, money behind their belief and to help women in sports get to another level, how can you, there's nothing bad with this offer by, you know, uh, the big three and Ice Cube. He's such a proponent of changing the game for women for good, not only on the court, but financially, the exposure. Look, I was with her Monday night in Iowa. And I had no clue until I woke up, I believe, Wednesday morning and my phone was being blown up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. But it made me happy. Um, it made me happy. I think it's fantastic what's going on. There's a lot of you know variables. The seasons overlap. In, in an ideal situation, would you like her to be able to, to play both, to try to do both? In an ideal situation, um, I want what's best for Caitlin Clark. She is a phenomenal human being and what she's done historically, you, you have to give her her props for working hard, for overcoming, you know, carrying a game on her shoulders, you know, changing the return on investment, uh, not only for TV, but in the arena, merch. She's changing us financially. And I think everybody should applaud her. And I do first want to say congratulations because we just found out she was added to the Olympic team. So that's amazing. And I'm just proud of her. Can she play against men? Yeah, of course she can. Will she be the best player? She'll bring whatever she has. You know, I played for the Lakers. I played for Pat Riley in 1980 in summer league. I played 86 for the Utah Jazz for Frank Layton. I played two years in the USBL, which is the equivalent of, you know, the NBA G League. Ann Myers made history when she was signed by the Indiana Pacers in 79. Is it probable that this could happen? Hell yeah. I know what it's like to get hit by a 280 pound guy setting a screen with me, on me. I know what it's like to be able to pick up a charge on Karl Malone, right? They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, but we have heart, we have desire, we have IQ. Caitlin is a wizard passing the basketball. Everything is possible. Didn't didn't Tyrone Bogues play in the NBA at 5'3"? Did they say that was a publicity stunt? No. When I got hired to coach in the big three and people go, oh, it's a publicity stunt. I'm like, dude, I've been around for 40 years. This ain't publicity. I've earned the right to be here. Becky has earned the right to be where she is. So it's just the naysayers, my friend, who look for the negative and things instead of the positive. You have the MBW, you have the big three, you have people wanting us right now. How bad can that be? I'm glad you brought up playing with against Carl Malone because I don't know if you saw Kenyon Martin was on like Gilbert Arenas' podcast and they and they weren't even knocking her as a player because I mean she's a better shooter than they are, but that that she wouldn't. With the physicality, they said she Kenyon said she wouldn't be able to score a point in the big three. You tend to disagree with that then. Kenyon was a, a really good player in the NBA, and he's a friend of mine, and I really respect him. But he's never been in her shoes. He's never been in my shoes. He's never been in Ann Meyer's shoes. He was fortunate to have a league to play in. Uh, he didn't change the game, but he played pretty damn well in this game. You know, the Annie's, uh, the Nancy's, the Cheryl Miller's, you know, the, um, you know, Brittany Griner's players like that have changed uh, the game and you have to look at it in that context. So she's already won the chip. The chip is like the chip to him is different than it is to me or Ann or Caitlin. The chip is changing your sport and making it viable. And all the things that I just talked about, you know, the almost 5 million people watching the game Monday night against West Virginia. They have been outdrawing men's basketball. They have been drawing, outdrawing golf and, and soccer. And I mean, she's a phenomena in what she is, is currently doing. And, you know, didn't our friend Billie Jean King uh, do that as well? You know, when she changed the sport, she's still changing it. But it was hysterical. Um historical, excuse me, when she did that with Bobby, but the big three, it's, it's a, it's a really great, super competitive league. And if you've never been in the arena to see how good the guys are, I think her teammates would set her up for success. If this is what she chose, 
I mean, I would love to, to coach somebody like Caitlin Clark. I was going to ask you that. Would, would you, there's obviously, I don't know how that would work if she does choose to play, but you clearly would want her on the power. Well, I, I yeah, I mean, if, if, if given the opportunity, I certainly am not afraid of the moment. Lisa Leslie wouldn't be afraid of the moment. Um, you know, our experiences and, and certainly Caitlin's current experiences, um, you know, playing, she grew up playing against guys. We all grew up playing against guys. This is the biggest difference. Um, I'm going to tell you what Barack Obama, President Obama, uh, Obama said to me when the Mavericks hired me as their head coach in the G League in 2011. I get invited to the White House. He was so excited because, you know, he's a hooper. And he takes me to the side and he goes, Nancy, and I'm going to paraphrase. I've been a person of color my whole life. I'm used to it. I just happen to be the president of the United States. You have been a white woman playing and coaching against predominantly black men your whole life. You're used to it. The outside world isn't used to it. It's our job to make them understand that this could be normal. It couldn't have been more succinct than that. It, all she's doing is trying right now as a, you know, a record breaker is to make it normal maybe for Juju or for some of the other great, you know, players coming up in college basketball, you shouldn't be afraid of greatness. You shouldn't be afraid to try. I mean, if Jackie Robinson didn't try, if so, if, if we have a two-term, we had a two-term African-American president. Every Nobody in their lifetime thought that they would see that. So again, a lot of people play the game and there's very few that change the game. Caitlin is changing the game. And at worst, the, the big three is offering her this respect of the game money for her talent. Uh, I, I think it's going to push um, our friends at the W, you know, maybe to increase, you know, salaries or, you know, some of the, the, the things that are going to be negotiated in the CBA. Michael Jordan did that. Nobody bitched about Michael Jordan. He was the first African-American to, besides Ali to have major national endorsements and to fill arenas. And nobody seemed to mind that he was breaking history and, you know, creating a new model that, you know, young African-American males could be on commercials and, and could be attached to, to products. We're just in a, a different time right now. The big three they're okay with the W. They love the WNBA. Cube loves the WNBA. They're just maximizing opportunities um, for her, for women. And how about for more sponsors and, and more, you know, economic growth? I mean, why shouldn't women have generational wealth like our male counterparts?